Good evening, everybody. How's everybody doing? What a, what a great event to be here. My name is Dustin DeVore. I'm a partner with the law firm of Kaufman and Canoles, and I am president of the Williamsburg James City County Superintendent's Business Advisory Committee. So what the heck is that, you're probably wondering. I've got to get, get my glasses out here. I used to make fun of Tommy for having to wear his glasses all the time. Now I have to do it. So what they say about payback. So um, the uh, Business Advisory Committee is a group that was formed a number of years ago to meet with the school superintendent on a uh, regular basis to discuss issues having to do with the business community and how the business community can help uh, the school division and how the school division can help the business community. So we meet with the superintendent about three or four times a year and uh, discuss those sorts of issues with her. Um, let her know what, what, we're, what we're seeing in, in the product that the school division is producing. And she lets us know what we can do to help her help the schools and help teachers. Um, a number of years ago, the committee, <coughs> pardon me, I've been fighting horrible allergies. Um, a number of years ago, uh, the committee took over the Teacher of the Year program. And for many years, uh, the three Teachers of the Year got a golden apple. And about 10 years ago or so, we, we said, you know, that, that's just not good enough. So uh, we started raising money for Teachers of the Year and uh, through 100% private sources, not a penny of tax money. And uh, I'm proud to say that this year, uh, due to all private contributions, which we'll talk about some more, each of the three Teachers of the Year will get a check for $1,000. Um, I know I'm, uh, I'm supposed to say I'll be brief, but I do have a number of people uh, I, I'd like to thank. So first, I'd like to thank the, the folks on our committee. Uh, Joe Poole, who is the president, or, I'm sorry, who is a vice president at Colonial Williamsburg. Uh, Joe could not be here tonight. Joe is, is very committed to education in our community and really wanted me to let everyone know that he wished he could be here. Um, our treasurer, Mark Sharp, the uh, president of, former president of Bush Construction, who is in, in the back, and uh, uh, Mark and his, his wife, Wilma, are very involved in our community. Mark is also a very highly decorated Vietnam veteran. Uh, Andy Bradshaw, uh, attorney from the uh, sprawling metropolis of Tuano. Uh, Andy is, in, in, and also, or as he likes to say, a farmer attorney. Uh, Andy is in the back there. Thank you, Andy. David Bush from PB Mayors. David, are you here? He's the Hokie on our group. Uh, Sharon Cornelius, the former executive director of the Greater, uh, Greater Williamsburg United Way. Is Sharon here? I don't think I've seen her. Uh, Michelle DeWitt, from the economic director from the city of Williamsburg. Uh, General Jim Golden, uh, who has worn about 27 different hats at the college, who many of you know, and uh, is also very involved in our community. Uh, Alan Graham, who is the president of Core 6 Precision Glass, uh, Alan is here. Uh, Earl Granger, who, who works at the college, claims he's the most handsome man to work at the college. I don't know if that's true or not, but thank you for being here, Earl. Uh, our superintendent, Dr. Heron, who we're very lucky to have here. Uh, Paul, Paul Muse, who is the CEO of First Advantage, who we're going to talk about more. Uh, Lisa Ownby, and uh, Jim Stevenson, who is the uh, uh, runs print pack. So I'd like to give a round of applause to uh, our board of directors. Uh, next, I'd like to uh, recognize uh, the elected officials we have here. Um, could I ask the members of the school board to please stand and uh, be recognized? Let's give them a round of applause. Do we have any members of the city council here? Did not see anyone from the city council, okay. Uh, members of the James City County Board of Supervisors. I saw John McGlennon is here. John is here every year. John, thank you for being here. Um, and I, I'd like to give special uh, recognition to uh, Senator Tommy Norman. Uh, Tommy, if you could stand up. And Senator Monty Mason. Monty, are you here yet? Monty emailed me and said he thought he'd be running late. I wanted to talk to everybody, just get on my soapbox just for one second here, and to uh, applaud Tommy and Monty both for working so hard this year to get the teacher pay raise. It was one of the largest teacher pay raises we've had in Virginia in a number of years, and uh, it was a real bipartisan uh, effort and I think really shows 
what we can do when we uh, work together. So uh, let's give some applause to Senator Norman and Senator Mason. Um, next, I'd like to uh, recognize our sponsors. Um, uh, our, our main sponsor for the fourth or fifth year in a row now is First Advantage Federal Credit Union. And I'd like to ask Paul Muse, the CEO of First Advantage Credit Union, whose wife Debbie works in the, in the uh, school division, to come up and say a few brief words. Paul. Hi, good evening. I'd actually like to thank Dustin for all his hard work to bring this together. So let's give him a round of applause, please. Yeah, we are very excited to sponsor this event tonight. Uh, we get many sponsors, uh, or sponsor requests, I should say, at the credit union every year. And this is always at the top of my list and uh, never something that we want to miss out on. Debbie and I both love coming here and, and seeing and listening to all the teachers uh, receive their awards and hearing what they have to say. So just on the behalf of the credit union, uh, we want to say congratulations to all the winners. And just uh, keep up the great work, and I hope you have a great rest of your year. It's the final push, right? Almost there. So thank you very much. Thanks, Paul. Uh, just so you all know, without First Advantage Federal Credit Union, it would be very difficult to do this event. So we're very appreciative. Um, I'd also like to, to thank several other of our major donors, um, Alan and Beth Graham. Of course, Six Precision Glass. Alan and Beth, stand up. I'm going to embarrass you. Uh, they're, they're in the, the back here. <laughs> Alan and Beth have been steadfast donors every year to this and have contributed a very significant amount of their own money to this event. Um, I'd also like to thank Senator Norman, who has been uh, probably, uh, other than First Advantage, our biggest donor through the years and has contributed this every year. So thank you, Senator Norman. And I'd like to thank Senator Mason, uh, who also has been a uh, steadfast donor uh, the last few years. Um, along with that, uh, a number of people made smaller contributions. So I'd like, uh, I'd like to thank uh, all our donors with one last round of applause. Finally, I'd like to recognize our, our school superintendent, uh, Dr. Heron. She, uh, for those of you that know her, she is the uh, calm in the storm. She is always very, uh, very even keeled, and uh, no matter the, the problem or the issue, whether great or small, she is al always a, a cool as a cucumber. And uh, for those of you who, those of you who know me well, uh, I am the opposite. So uh, uh, we are, I think, a, a good team. Uh, so with that, uh, Dr. Heron, do you want to join me up here? Oh, and, and also, Lisa Owen, be the chair of the school board. And Lisa's going to introduce our Teachers of the Year. Good evening. Can everyone hear me okay? Thank you for coming tonight to celebrate our wonderful teachers. Please join me again in thanking the Superintendent's Business and Advisory Committee. They generously host this event and help recognize the very best and brightest teachers from the division. We are truly very, very grateful for the support and partnership of this committee. So community partnership is, is so important and we thank you for that. This evening we're excited to not only recognize the Teachers of the Year, but also introduce a new program to celebrate the work of brand new teachers. Our division is committed to the retention and celebration of high quality staff. And with that in mind, a Rookie Teacher of the Year program is being launched this year to acknowledge outstanding performance and superior instructional skills among teachers in the very first year of their profession. As I call the names of these teachers, I would ask Dr. Heron to join me to present each teacher with a token of appreciation. Teachers, please remain up front. Okay. So, Clara Bird Baker, Rookie Teacher of the Year, Kara Chawalski. <laughs> Matoka, Rookie Teacher of the Year, Emma Newman. Um, Matthew Ailey, Rookie Teacher of the Year, Amy Newcomb. Congratulations, Amy. Our 
this is making me feel really old. You all look like way too young to be teaching. And Nord's Rookie Teacher of the Year, Kate Rosler. Rosler? Stonehouse Rookie of Teacher, Rookie Teacher of the Year, Rebecca Pullen. Lois S. Hornsby, Rookie Teacher of the Year, Joshua Denny. Tuano Middle School, Rookie Teacher of the Year, Emily Lovecamp. Jamestown Rookie Teacher of the Year, Alain Parham. Lafayette Rookie Teacher of the Year, Sean Smith. And lastly, Warhill Rookie Teacher of the Year, Zachary Fetters. From among these very first year teachers, one has been selected as a 2019 WJCC Rookie Teacher of the Year. Described by the principal as an innovative, flexible teacher who truly cares about academic excellence as well as overall well-being of students, this individual builds a solid rapport with students as a member of the MTSS team and the NHS Advisory Council. This individual is actively involved in all aspects of the school community and understands how this tenacity directly impacts student growth. Please join me in congratulating War Hill High School teacher Zachary Fetters as the WJCC 2019 Rookie Teacher of the Year. So we thank you, all of our rookie teachers. You may be seated. On behalf of the school board, it is a great honor to celebrate the accomplishments of teachers new to the field, and we're excited to see this program grow. Who knows, we may see these teachers back in a short while at this reception for recognition as part of the traditional Teacher of the Year program. So speaking of which, let's turn now to um, this year's more seasoned Teachers of the Year. These outstanding individuals help to realize our vision of pursuing excellence and champion success of students. Teachers of this caliber transform teaching and learning to prepare students for success beyond high school, beyond school. In short, they bring our strategic plan to life and truly elevate teaching and learning beyond excellence. It's my pleasure to introduce the WJCC Teachers of the Year for each school. Teachers, as your name is called, please join us up front to be recognized. You may return to your seat once Dr. Heron presents you with a token of appreciation. Each teacher is receiving a shirt. We hope that you will wear this with pride <laughs> as you serve as a leader in your school and an ambassador for the school division. <laughs> okay. So, without further ado, let's meet our 2019 Teachers of the Year. Bright Beginnings Teacher of the Year, Patty Harris. I think do we want them to go? Do we want them to stay? Okay. okay. 
uh, Claire Bird Baker, Teacher of the Year, Diane Howell. DJ Montague, Teacher of the Year, Abby Reynolds. <laughs> J. Blaine Blayton, Teacher of the Year, Rose Marsh. <laughs> James River, Teacher of the Year, Janet Del Fecco. Laurel Lane, Teacher of the Year, Aaron Elmore. Matoka, Teacher of the Year, Roxana Jankovic. Matthew Whaley, Teacher of the Year, Meredith Watkins. Norge, Teacher of the Year, Cindy Cottrell. Stonehouse Teacher of the Year, Julie Lipscomb. Teacher of the Year, Mary Glisson. James Blair, Teacher of the Year, Casey Ford Starry. Lois S. Hornsby, Teacher of the Year, Andrea Lane. <laughs> Tuano, Teacher of the Year, Jennifer Brungett. Jamestown Teacher of the Year, Melissa Furr. <laughs> Lafayette Teacher of the Year, Jennifer Swinson. And lastly, Warhill Teacher of the Year, Christina Marshburn. Okay. okay, she's with her students tonight. So we miss her tonight. Um, on behalf of the school board, I would like to thank each and every one of you for your commitment to excellence, for the contributions you make in your classroom each and every day. To get to know our teachers of the year a little better, we went out and asked them a few questions. Not only did we gain insight into their teaching and their practices, but we also learned a few embarrassing teaching moments and more. So let's watch the video. The best part of my day is the mornings. I stand out in the hallway and I say good morning to every student who comes by and I can then tell whether they're in a good mood or a bad mood and um, if they don't say good morning to me, then sometimes I'll follow them down the hallway. What makes a good day and bright beginnings? There's a lot of things that go into a good day, but primarily if my kids are being kind to each other, that is the biggest thing that, that just makes the whole day for me. The best part of my day is when I go to lunch with my center's team um, because that is the only time we get to interact with each other. Because center's teachers, they're, we're on islands, you know, we don't get to meet with our CRTs or meet with our other art teachers. So that's kind of our time to get together and I have an amazing center's team. Well, if I was given the whole day to plan, 
first, I would make one million copies from now until the end of the school year. If I were a superhero, I would be Batman because he has really cool gadgets and after a hard day's work, he goes home and Alfred has taken care of everything for him. I would spend as much time as I wanted in the bathroom, as much time, um, without feeling rushed. I always keep Skittles at hand. I eat them by the handful. The kids and staff here know that if you see me in the hall, I'm probably going to look like a chipmunk with Skittles in my cheeks. I would eat at my back table and again, not feel rushed. If I had my own administrative as assistant, they would handle all of the back end production work for all of our shows that we do here. Uh, do some cleaning, you know, get some Clorox wipes, wipe down every surface in this room. If my class had a mascot, as one of my students told me today, it'd be the armadillo because we roll with it. Then maybe do a little planning. If I could go out to dinner with anybody, um, the Steeler fan in me comes out and off the top of my head I would pick Mike Tomlin or Ben Roethlisberger. Um, just have always loved the Steelers, grew up in Pittsburgh and they're just my idols. Money was no object and I could take my students on any field trip. I probably would love to take them to France where um, everything started originally with American Sign Language. Um, it actually originated in France and we were able to take some of the signs from there. So I would want to go there. I would definitely spend um, more time in Washington, D.C. We get a chance to go to Washington, Washington D.C. in um, eighth grade. And um, there's never enough time. My hidden talent oh, is um, I love fashion. I could, I could do fashion, I can organize, I could shop for you, I could style you. That's my hit. If I won the lottery and I was no longer a teacher, I already have it planned out. This is more like my retirement plan. Buying a house on the water with like a sunroom with all windows and painting and having, I know it's kind of teaching as well, but having people independently come in and I could teach them painting and drawing and different stuff like that. The word that creeps me out the, word, the most is moist. <laughs> I don't know, there's something about that word that is just so gross to me. <laughs> I can't handle that. If I were a superhero, I would definitely be Wolverine. Wolverine is one of the most respected, um, but he also regenerates. And so that refreshing, renewing feeling every day would be so awesome. Um, if I won the lottery, I would want to travel as much as possible. And then I would love to help plan trips for other people so that they could go see all their dream destinations. So one of the most surprising things that has happened in my classroom was one day when my own children were very small and I'm sure at home I was busy getting ready, but apparently I had forgot to put on mascara. And so when I was greeting my students at the door, one of them said, Mrs. Watkins, what's wrong with your face? I had no idea that I had forgotten to put on makeup. And so I was like, I don't, I don't know. I looked in the mirror and I could, oh. And so the whole day, everyone was like, what's wrong with Mrs. Watkins? Is she okay? She looks sick. Now I'd like to turn it over to Dr. Heron to introduce the WJCC Elementary, Middle, and High School Teachers of the Year. Dr. Heron. Thank you, Ms. Ownby. Good evening, everyone. Before I introduce the level teachers of the year, I would like to thank the Superintendent's Business and Community Advisory Committee, in addition to helping us make this event an incredible success every year. They also share their time and talents to assist us in a number of different ways. And I've got to say, personally, their input is invaluable, and I'm grateful for this collaborative partnership. So thank you, Dustin, and all of the members here this evening. Thank you. It gives me great pride to be superintendent of such a wonderful school division. The heart of what makes WJC schools so special is the students and our incredible teachers who are willing to do whatever it takes to meet each student where he or she is and move them forward in their learning. No one becomes a teacher for the money or ours. I'm sure you're surprised at that. Teaching is a calling, not simply a career. We are so fortunate that the dedicated men and women in this room have chosen to commit their time and incredible talent to support, in support of the young people in our community. 
and it is truly my honour to recognise these teachers for the contributions to our schools and our students. Please join me in thanking every single teacher in the room. Now, I have the pleasure of telling you a little bit more about each of our level Teachers of the Year. Abby Reynolds is WJCC's Elementary Teacher of the Year. Ms Reynolds, will you please join me at the front of the room? <laughs> Ms Reynolds is a Special Education Teacher at DJ Montague Elementary. Having been a regular and special education teacher, Ms. Reynolds is keenly aware of the impact collaboration has on student success. Over the 14 years she's been in education, Ms. Reynolds finds the more people she collaborates with, the more united the team that supports student learning, which leads in turn to students experiencing even more successful moments. Because Ms. Reynolds strongly believes collaboration is integral to student learning, she schedules recurring consult and planning meetings with the inclusion teachers. These meetings allow the teachers to outline what has been asked of students and then exchange ideas about how to improve barriers that may limit students' success. Since the entire scope of Ms. Reynolds' instruction is influenced and improved through collaboration, she can be found daily planning with teachers, assistants, therapists, speech pathologists and families with a deliberate approach to meeting the specific needs of every single student. One of Miss Reynolds' favourite quotes is from Wilma Rudolph and reads, Never underestimate the power of dreams and the influence of the human spirit. We are all the same in this notion. The potential for greatness lives within each of us. This quotation contributes to Miss Reynolds contributes to Miss Reynolds' philosophy that perceived limitations in students' lives do not limit what they are capable of doing. As a teacher and personal cheerleader for her students, Ms. Reynolds believes the time she spends working alongside inclusion teachers and assistants to create activities, homework, assessments, these level the playing fields for her students' success. Ms. Reynolds' proudest teaching moments are watching students uh, realize what they have accomplished in spite of their perceived limitations. She uses charts and graphs to show students the progress they've made and to build resiliency. She works with students to verbalize the strategies they are using to help them feel successful. According to Ms. Reynolds, once students recognize what works for them, it is easier to apply these strategies independently. Ms. Reynolds strives to help every student dream big and approach new situations with the strategies and skills that they have learned. She finds it incredibly rewarding when she can help a student discover the best way to go from feeling limited to feeling limitless. I'm sure this philosophy <coughs> is critical to the success of her students. DJ Montague's principal, Kathy Vasquez, says, Ms. Reynolds' unconditional love for students is an inspiration for all. Ms. Reynolds knows her students and their needs and has a way of making each of them feel special, supported and valued. Ms. Reynolds is an amazing problem solver. She never settles and always looks for ways to improve her teaching and interactions with students. Abby, congratulations on your recognition as DJ Montague and WJCC Elementary School Teacher of the Year. Thank you so much for this honor. I just wanted to say real quick, I truly feel like the lucky one to get to work with the students that I work with, to see their success, to watch them feel accomplishment. And I also wanted to thank my administration, my husband Craig, for being here, for supporting me. I would not be standing here without the team behind me. So this represents a team of paraprofessionals, general education teachers, therapists, families, so many people that work together collaboratively. So thank you on behalf of all of them and my wonderful students who um, they're the reason I get to be here, and like I said, I feel like the lucky one, so thank you. Yeah. 
I am now pleased to introduce Dr. Mary Glisson, WJCC's Middle School Teacher of the Year. And Dr. Glisson is already on her way to join me <laughs> at the front of the room. <clears throat> Dr. Glisson can be found teaching mathematics every day to sixth grade students at Berkeley Middle School. As a career switcher, Dr. Glisson views teaching as an advanced form of coaching. Her approach begins with developing relationships and then moves to understanding the what and why of classwork and ends with practice, practice, practice. Because Dr. Glisson's philosophy centers around relationships, her pedagogy is not just about the subject she is teaching, but includes communications that will help her build relationships. It's common, it's common to overhear Dr. Glisson engage in conversations with students that have absolutely nothing to do with mathematics. Because she thrives to empower students to become mathematicians and she realizes that middle school students tend to bore a little easily, Dr. Glisson is continually looking for ways that students can demonstrate their understanding of math concepts. She allows students to make test quiz corrections and has created totally different assessments for some students. Multiple opportunities for students to master concepts is a great way to boost student confidence and is often what some students need to express what they have learned. Like many other teachers, the most rewarding part of Dr. Glisson's career is experiencing individual student growth. Since her philosophy of teaching centers on relationships, Dr. Glisson often attends rec league games and other non-school related activities to support her students. You will not be surprised that she's made many home visits as well. Dr. Glisson truly enjoys being able to celebrate students' academic and personal accomplishments. Dr. Glisson believes that learning is maximized in an environment where it's okay to take risks and even fail. Some of life's greatest lessons result from failures. So students in Dr. Glisson's classes are given opportunities for growth as well as redemption. Believing this environment can only exist when students feel safe and have a sense of belonging, Dr. Glisson finds WJCC's core value, individualism, largely influences her teaching. In her opinion, the focus in class is not only to teach the curriculum, but to make it stick, but also to find ways to make students tick. Her words. Dr. Glisson's approach to the goal is to look for ways to connect with each and every student and she has found this leads to an increase in student engagement. Berkeley Middle School Principal, principal uh, Panayotis uh, Chikoritas shares, Dr. Glisson's classroom is inclusive and welcoming. She is diligent in building relationships with students, sets the bar high, and doesn't allow them to settle for anything except their best effort. Not only does she expect greatness from her students, but also holds people accountable for their actions. Dr. Glisson brings solutions with her concerns, and I value her immensely as a college coach and a friend. Mary, congratulations on your recognition as Berkeley Middle and WJCC Middle School Teacher of the Year. Thank you very much. Um, in education, we often hear that it takes a village to raise a child. And I would argue that it takes a village to be a teacher. And so I'm going to take a few minutes. I hope you all don't get too bored. But I'm going to thank my village. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank God who has given me opportunities and given me choices and therefore has guided me to be in the position that I am right now. Uh, to my colleagues at Berkeley, um, we've been through a lot the last several years, and I appreciate their, um, their support, their vote of confidence, and especially to my sixth grade village people um, who are the best. Uh, special shout out to Chandra Dunn, who I think is the best teacher at Berkeley Middle School, and to my quad squad. Um, everybody, no matter what your job, needs to have people that you can go to to laugh with, to cry with, and who are always going to tell you the truth. And I have that at Berkeley. Um, next, I'd like to thank my... Um, fellow teachers of the year. And I'm not sure if you've read the press that you have on yourselves, but you're amazing. And I feel like 
I am so honored to be a part of the club that I am now in with you. So thank you for that. To my administrators, uh, Mr. Chikoritas, Karen Swan, a former administrator, who have allowed me to be me. Uh, I've been through nine administrative teams since coming to Berkeley, and uh, once I've gotten them broken in, uh, <laughs> they, uh, they, I, th I think they realize that I am here for the kids, because that's, that's my number one question. What is it that we're doing that, that can help the kids? Um, to my families, um, my student families, who provide me with pencils and uh, erasers and pies for pie day, Robin, um, and also provide me with my kryptonite, which happens to be peanut M&Ms. So I have enough of those to last me for the rest of the year, thanks to them. And to my students who make me laugh, sometimes make me cry, because some of them are going through things that uh, no child should ever have to go through. So um, they were so excited to see balloons in my room, and uh, um, I, I was just happy that they were happy for me. And last, but certainly not least, my family. Um, they both went through Williamsburg, James City County Schools, and I was able to pick things that they thought important, that they saw through their teachers, and to incorporate them in my classroom. Um, my oldest daughter asked me every day, why would anyone want to be a teacher? It's a good question. Um, <laughs> obviously not for the money, but she is my technology advisor, so I thank her for that. Uh, and for Crystal, who surprised me by coming in today from uh, up in Northern Virginia to, uh, just to be here, she got the Bright Beginnings Teacher of the Year last year, and so she inspired me. And she is also the, the person who at age seven said, Mom, Dad, I refuse to go to another summer camp. Um, I was happily working at William & Mary. Uh, I could close my door and take phone calls. I could have a secretary uh, redirect whatever was happening. And who would have thought that I would have ever gotten into a classroom where that's just not the thing that's happening. So um, thank you to Crystal. And most of all, thank you to my husband, Chuck, who I don't know how anybody out there does this job without a supportive, significant other. Um, so he's made things for my classroom. He has carried things for me. He has uh, just been the sounding board, uh, given me ideas because his opinion is important and objective. Um, and most of all, he um, cooks for me every night. So <laughs> he's all mine. Thank you very much. <laughs> And now, Melissa Missy Furr, WJCC's High School Teacher of the Year. Ms. Furr, will you please join me? Thank you. <laughs> Ms. Furr is a visual arts teacher at Jamestown High School. She's been described as a leader in the Jamestown community, and all of her work is grounded in the concept of collaboration. While working with four colleagues to develop the Concourse 9 curriculum, Ms. Farr found that she was challenged by teachers with differing opinions to her own. Because their opinions were so different, it made her think about things from a completely different perspective, and together they were able to make unique yet extremely powerful connections in their content areas. This experience not only had a huge impact on Ms. Farr's teaching practices, but also influenced her success as a teacher. Upon being challenged by her principal to reevaluate her why, Ms. Ferds determined that teaching is not just about the subject, but it is also about the students and their relationship to what they are learning. Thus, her why has evolved into helping students become better at critical thinking and realizing failure is a part of the learning process. Reflecting on this teaching philosophy, Ms. Fur has found students are more empowered by outcomes when they are allowed to drive the creative process. As an art teacher, Ms. Furr viewed her curriculum as project-based, but now she sees that her instruction was teacher-directed. Over the years, her teaching experience has continued to shape her philosophy, and Ms. Furr has come to the understanding that the learning comes from the students, and her role is simply to serve as the facilitator of the lessons. 
In her classroom, this manifests as class critiques, self-reflections, and digital portfolios. Consequently, Ms. Furras found a key to her success as a teacher in making strong connections to her students. She strives to not only build positive relationships, but also encourage similar connections among the students in her classroom. Without a doubt, collaboration is the core value Ms. Furr epitomizes most. Most of you know of the exceptional Eagles in our school division. The exceptional Eagles club and games originated several years ago after Ms. Furr worked with two special education teachers to create an inclusive environment in one of her drawing classes. Initially, Ms. Furr's intention was simply to work with colleagues to modify lessons and rubrics so all of her students could be successful. However, she was most, Im more, most impressed by the organic way relationships forged in the class between students. This led to colleagues collaborating over the summer and sharing ideas on how to keep these connections going. The Exceptional Games program originated from these discussions and is now an annual event attended by most schools and involving volunteers from across the whole school division. Jamestown High School's principal, Howard Townsend, described Ms. Furr as a passionate teacher who makes connections beyond her classroom. He adds, Ms. Furr challenges students to make our community and world a better place. Through the memory project, students create drawings for young people facing challenges. The students learn that art impacts the lives of others for positive memories, kindness, and peace. Ms. Furr is well respected in the Jamestown High School community, and I'm very proud that she is my colleague. Missy, congratulations on your recognition as Jamestown High and WJCC High School Teacher of the Year. Quickly, this is so cool. Um, I am so honored and grateful, and like my colleague said, it really does take a village. I have been supported since day one. I started my teaching career at Jamestown, and I can't imagine being anywhere else. Um, I work with amazing, amazing people. Through working with the Commonwealth Innovation, I've been able to work with a lot of the other high schools and see their passionate teachers, their masters of content, and that has been an amazing experience. Through the exceptional games, working with all of these elementary, middle, and high school teachers, um, central office, so many people are willing to go above and beyond. So it's so cool to be recognized in this division. It's really an honor. Thank you. Through the Teacher of the Year program, we were able to recognize and celebrate outstanding teachers from each school each level, and also one extraordinary individual who will serve as the Division Teacher of the Year and represent WJCC in the Virginia Teacher of the Year program. The Division Teacher of the Year is selected from the three level Teachers of the Year that you've just met this evening. This outstanding individual is selected based on a nominating packet, an interview, and observation of performance in the classroom. It is now our pleasure to announce the WJCC Teacher of the Year, and I'd like to invite Ms. Ownby up to have the honor of making this announcement. This is so exciting. <laughs> I might just let you take it all in for a minute, because I know who the winner is. <laughs> so, the 2019 WJCC Teacher of the Year goes to Ms. Furr. This is amazing. Thank you so much. This is such an honor. Um, wow. Like, <laughs> I guess I should have planned something. Um, There's so many amazing teachers. Um, listening to just the three that were talked about today, I, 
I can't believe I'm up here standing. I, I really do feel all year long or all month long people saying congratulations, well deserved. And I'm looking at them going, you deserve it too because we work in a building and a division with so many amazing teachers who just care so much and go above and beyond and do so much. This is pretty amazing and um, super cool. I can't think of any other better <laughs> describing words right now, but awesome. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. I know many people can recall the special teachers in their lives. I remember my first grade teacher, Sister Alice. I'd probably be in prison if it wasn't for her right now, uh, uh, who uh, uh, really locked down on me. But um, thanks, everybody, for being here. Thank you again to First Advantage Federal Credit Union, our, our main sponsor. Uh, thanks to, the, um, uh, to Dr. Heron and to the school board. And uh, with that, we're going to adjourn. I would ask if the teachers of the year would come back up. We're going to take a couple more pictures. Uh, and we are adjourned. So thank you for being here. <laughs>